Mr. Speaker, the statement this morning is intended to address the issue of road infrastructure in St. Lucia, particularly two specific areas. However, I shall deviate for a moment to address what seemed to be a malicious posting which was placed on social media uh, last evening thereabout in an attempt to instill fear in the minds of St. Lucians, and it has to do with the shock bridge. Mr. Speaker, in January of this year, 2023, uh, through the Road Maintenance and Asset Maintenance Management System, the Ministry was able to detect some obvious um, depressions in the shock bridge. We have been monitoring it ever since and have seen some progression in the depressions and have taken certain action. The shock bridge was constructed some 30 to 40 years ago, maybe, maybe about 49, 50, in 1972, thereabout, when the Castries Grosley Highway was upgraded. The composite structure, Mr. Speaker, of, comprises five elliptical, flat-bottomed, corrugated metal culverts, often called AMCO culverts. It's reinforced by concrete walls, encased, encasement of culverts, and the voids are filled with granular material and a flexible road pavement, what is called an asphaltic overlay. The passage of Hurricane Thomas, Mr. Speaker, in 2010 resulted in major damage to the bridge, which necessitated remedial works. The findings revealed the following. At the time, three fully functioning culverts, one condemned culvert, one deformed but functioning culvert. Two, sunken pavement, most likely due to the dissipation of base material through fissures, in the crown of the culverts over time, particularly after storm surges. Three, cracking around the culvert inlet and outlet due to weathering and erosion. And four, sunken pavement depression in road surface due to large pieces of boulders utilized during remedial works at the time in 210 to bring about the, bring about the motorability of the bridge in quick time. This most likely occurred during the remedial works carried out in 2010 following Hurricane Thomas. Since then, Mr. Speaker, more remedial works have been undertaken on that bridge to sustain it and to prepare at least to have it functional as we prepare for the reconstruction and redevelopment of the castries Grosley Highway. Recent recommendations made spoke to seal cracks around the culvert at inlet and outlet, remove damaged pavement, fill and compact with additional stabilized base material and surface. And three, a team was set up to prepare designs and costings for remedial mid-term solution. Mr. Speaker, out of, that, out of the team established, the intention was twofold. One, to undertake remedial works to allow for the continuous functionality of the bridge while we conclude negotiations for the reconstruction of the Julian R. Hunt Highway, often called the Castries Grosley Highway, from the Shock Bridge all the way to Grosley. These discussions, Mr. Speaker, obviously caused certain medium, immediate, medium, and long-term um, decisions, and it was agreed that we will go with a medium-term decision. In January, the investigation was completed, in March, topographic survey was completed. In June 2023, the designs were commenced. In July, submission of the designs, draft submissions were made. 
and in August, the designs were reviewed and approved. The decision is, Mr. Speaker, that the department will proceed with the remedial works, which will mean to rectify the current uh, situation, which is quite obvious, and to allow for the sustainability of the road as we prepare for the construction of the Julian R. Hunt Highway. This week should have been the commencement of those works, but we have been delayed in negotiations and a determination as to whether we should have shut down the Castries Grizzly Highway from Shock to Marisale and to allow a diversion of traffic from the Shock roundabout through to Union, Granvier, and on to Marisale. However, a decision was made that there's no need to shut it down. We can avoid having to build a bypass, which is the second option, having to build a bypass bridge as a temporary measure, which would have made the exercise, the, the remedial measure, a more costly one. And therefore, we have resorted now to doing this project overnight, uh, working 24 hours a day, and um, uh, rather 24 hours a day, particularly night time, to allow us to complete this project. A contractor has been selected, and the cost of this project is just under 500,000 EC dollars. I must admit that there's no need for any alarm in terms of the possibility of the bridge collapsing at any given time. The bridge is built, not as, it's not a suspended bridge, but rather a bridge built on five AMCO pipes, cylindrical pipes, which are, um, where the, where the um, fault is seen is over one of those pipes. And therefore, there's no need for any serious alarm. We are constantly monitoring it week after week after week. And therefore, we're hoping that once we start the work, we will be able to complete within a very short space of time. But Mr. Speaker, permit me on this occasion this opportunity this morning to address the pressing issue of road infrastructure in our country. Mr. Speaker, our road network is the acute link of our economy, connecting communities, facilitating trade, underpinning social services, and enabling the movement of people and goods on a daily basis. However, Mr. Speaker, a major section of our road infrastructure is severely stressed and fatigued, and it is evident that it is in dire need of increased attention and investment. Our roads are plagued by congestion which hampers productivity and contribute to increased fuel consumption, and by extension, pollution. The significant delays on our highways and byways imposes severe strain on economic activities. Hence, it is imperative that we consider investing in the expansion of existing roads, constructing new highways and byways, and in the very near future, the implementation of intelligent transportation systems to alleviate congestion and improve the flow of traffic. Much of this, Mr. Speaker, much detail on this matter will be dealt with at a later date when I present the plans for the ensuing year, the coming year, and of course a major infrastructure program and plan called Infrastructure 2030, which will address the deficit in infrastructure and the visioning of infrastructure beyond the year 2030. Notwithstanding our need to reduce congestion on the road network, Mr. Speaker, Today my focus is on the ongoing initiatives being undertaken by the Department of Infrastructure to maintain our existing road network as we prepare for some major investment and overhaul of the country's infrastructure. The Department is committed to its priority of the maintenance and rehabilitation of all roads to ensure the safety and well-being of our citizens. Through the road maintenance management system, the department continues regular inspections of roads, bridges, culverts, and hence the reason why we're able to detect the activity on the shock bridge, and in the general infrastructure in our endeavor to institute timely interventions and the use of durable and sustainable materials in road maintenance and construction. 
Furthermore, our road infrastructure must be designed with sustainability in mind. Climate change is a reality, and our roads should be resilient to its impacts. This includes incorporating climate adaptation measures, such as proper drainage systems to mitigate flooding, and using environmentally friendly materials that reduce carbon emissions. An example of this sustainable design is the Millennium Highway and Westcote Road Rehabilitation Project. There are a suite of initiatives, Mr. Speaker, which have been programmed for the third quarter, October to December 2023. Some of the more critical ones include rehabilitation of critical sections of the East Coast Road for which there is a budgetary allocation. Two, rehabilitation of the Shock Bridge, again, which has been budgeted for this quarter. Rehabilitation of Austin Hill, for which negotiations have just been completed and a contract to be awarded. Maintenance of critical roads, rehabilitation of the West Coast Road, and the reconstruction of the Ansari Bridge. For this presentation, Mr. Speaker, my focus will be on two main initiatives, maintenance of critical roads, and two, the Millennium Highway and West Coast Road Rehabilitation Project. Maintenance, Mr. Speaker. The Department of Infrastructure recognizing the need to prioritize the maintenance of our roads, particularly as we recognize the impact of changing climatic conditions, and the aging road network developed a road maintenance program for a period of six months to be implemented island-wide. This program, which will be implemented this fiscal quarter, seeks to combine the efforts of the department's in-house expertise together with that of competent and capable private contractors to maintain the roads in an efficient and timely manner. The reason for this, Mr. Speaker, is that in the last two years, we have focused on maintaining our road network primarily with in-house competence without engaging private sector contractors. We have realized the rate of deterioration and fatigue on the road is such that we need to engage private contractors. And so that program has been developed to engage the private sector contractors to expedite the process of erasing that deficit and in-house competence to deal and pay attention to some of the more critical needs. The total cost of implementation of this particular and dedicated initiative is $4.5 million, and the details of which will be released at some time to members. Millennium Highway and West Coast Road Reconstruction Project, Mr. Speaker. On the Millennium Highway, the contractor is C.O. Williams Construction Barbados Limited. The project, which costs a total of 96 $0.19 million is expected to end in December of 2024. That's the overall project, not Millennium Highway. Millennium Highway should have been completed by now. They have sought extension of time, and the completion date is March of 2024, although in my own utterances, I have pressed on to say that we need to complete it before Christmas of this year, and my anticipation was October. However, we continue to press, press for performance and to ensure that that project is completed. The project, Mr. Speaker, is financed by the United Kingdom Caribbean Infrastructure Partnership Fund, commonly called UKCIF, through a grant managed by the Caribbean Development Bank. And that is very important because in other quarters, they have indicated that it is a loan that the government has sought to construct the Millennium Highway. No, it's not a loan. It is a grant from the United Kingdom, which was made in 2005, 2015, sorry, when Dr. Anthony was Prime Minister. Um, that grant is intended, and um, that grant was uh, declared by Prime Minister David Cameron, and was intended for the entire region, each identifying a, an infrastructural project that will bolster their own economic and social upliftment. 
This, Mr. Speaker, this grant has been managed through the Caribbean Development Bank, who oversees the arrangements, and the Government of St. Lucia, which is responsible for financing project management office costs, land acquisition and taxes. The grant does not facilitate the acquisition of land and does not cater for payment of taxes, whether it's a VAT or other taxes. The scope includes, but is not limited to, the rehabilitation and upgrade of approximately 40.2 kilometers of existing road, associated drainage, retaining structures, bridge replacement, road realignment, and roundabout construction. The expected project outcomes are, one, a increased efficiency, resilience, and road safety of the Millennium Highway and West Coast Road. And Mr. Speaker, in addition to that, a national road safety program has been financed under the program. And B, improved maintenance and planning for the road sector in St. Lucia. So these are some of the other components of the project, apart from the physical component of rebuilding the roads, but rather to put in place um, systems and structures in place, um, institutional strengthening to help us in the man management of our road se sector. Project components include the following. Project proprietary assistance, land relocation of project affected persons, infrastructural works, engineering and construction related activities, institutional strengthening, capacity building and project management. Mr. Speaker, under the infrastructure work undertaken or to be undertaken, the project entails the rehabilitation and reconstruction of approximately 40.2 kilometers of road, originally separated into three components that were identified as lot number one, which is the Millennium Highway to Cul-de-Sac Roundabout, lot number two, Cul-de-Sac to Ancillary, which includes the reconstruction of the Ancillary Bridge, and lot three, Ancillary to Soufre Leg, and that goes on to the, um, to the Soufre Bridge. Project status of lot one, Mr. Speaker, which is the Millennium Highway, despite meticulous planning, there are unprecedented circumstances which have plagued the progress of this project, particularly along lot number one, the Millennium Highway. This has raised the anxiety, not only of the people of St. Lucia, but most of all, the government, me as, prime, as, as, as senior minister and minister for infrastructure, and the prime minister. Unforeseen circumstances, Mr. Speaker, include contractor challenges, management, organizational, financial, etc. COVID-19 work shutdown, inclement weather conditions and availability of resources have significantly hampered the progress on this segment of the road. These delays have not only caused inconvenience to commuters and local businesses, but have also resulted in missed opportunities for economic growth. Nonetheless, Mr. Speaker, let me assure you of our unwavering commitment to completing this project su successfully and of superior quality. Our team has been working assiduously to mitigate the challenges faced while maintaining the highest standards of quality and safety on the project. We have been closely collaborating with all stakeholders, including local authorities, community representatives, project affected persons to address their concerns and ensure fairness of trans and transparency throughout the project. Additionally, Mr. Speaker, we have been engaged in weekly progress meetings with key stakeholders to discuss the project details, receive updates on progress, provide guidance and resolving issues. This collaborative approach, Mr. Speaker, is crucial to finding effective solutions in a timely manner. And we have been doing this, Mr. Speaker, with the involvement of the CDB and the UK CIF representatives. We have noted some progress, Mr. Speaker, by the contractor during the last six weeks, ever since the last visit of the CDB and the, and the site visit to which the Prime Minister participated. And we are hoping, Mr. Speaker, as a consequence of the progress seen in the last six weeks, we are hoping that the weather will improve to enable greater productivity on this significant project. 
The total progress of work now stands at approximately 42 to 46 percent, way below what is expected of the company of the contractor. The major progress observed includes application of regulatory costs on this, construction of utilities, and the roundabout in cul-de-sac, reclaiming, milling, and the construction of sidewalls. The, Mr. Speaker, the regulatory, regulating cost base that I speak of is what those of you who utilize the highway at this time would see as commencement of paving. Paving has not commenced. The actual paving has not commenced. What has commenced is what we call a regulatory base, which allows to stabilize, at least to seal and protect the, the, um, the base, and then to come later on and to put in the, the three or four inches of asphalt. The pro project progress to date, Mr. Speaker, drainage and ancillary works is at 72%, most advanced. Road works, um, an undetermined um, percentage because of it's only at um, regulatory base. And utilities is at 70%. So in the coming weeks, we're hoping that we will be able to achieve the remaining 30%. The next slot, Mr. Speaker, is lot 2A to 3A and 3B, which is road reconstruction from cul-de-sac to Soufre. The, country, the company which won the bid is a company out of Trinidad and Tobago by the name of Namalco, who have more or less partially mobilized with the importation of equipment located in cul de -Sat at a temporary construction operational site. The contract was signed on the 8th of March, 2023, and the commencement date granted for the 15th of March, 15th of May, 2023. The project has not in earnest started on the ground, notwithstanding the start date was May, 20, May 15, 2023. We have been providing support to the contractor in streamlining bureaucratic processes and providing necessary guidance to overcome the current setbacks in the establishment of the operational site. With this process, Mr. Speaker, almost completed, it is anticipated that the contractor should commence actual work on the ground before the end of October 2023. The major milestones, Mr. Speaker, to date is the ability of the government to pay the necessary advance payment to the contractor, which would facilitate mobilization and commencement of the work. The project management unit did an addendum to the contract as one other hurdle which we were forced to cross to allow the contractor to receive the advance payment in the bank in Trinidad. Initially, the payment was not processed by the CDB, consequent to a discrepancy in the bank's currency and the currency stated in the contract. So there, there was some deviation in what was stated in the contract and what the, um, the bank was anticipating the payments would be made in the currency that they anticipated. The payment has now been approved by the CDB and it is expected that the contractor will receive the payments this week and that the contractor is, um, will commence once that payment is received. Other hurdles, which included DCA approval, I'm pleased to announce, Mr. Speaker, that all approvals necessary at this time have been granted by the DCA. So there are no, no pending applications before the DCA for the commencement of this project. Compliance with documents, Mr. Speaker, most of the documents have been submitted to the engineer for review. Some of the documents are non-compliant, for example, extreme weather management plan that has been worked on, traffic management plan which has been reviewed, document which has not been submitted for the engineer's review include quality management plan and waste management plan. All of these, Mr. Speaker, are critical in the execution of such a major project to make sure that traffic management is adequate that um, the weather, the weather, um, extreme weather management plan, how do you manage that, 
that situation, quality management in terms of the quality of material being used, and of course waste management, how do you dispose of waste and where do you dispose of it. Some of these, Mr. Speaker, are as a consequence of experiences on the current Millennium Highway. The contractor's claims, Mr. Speaker, consequent to the delay in commencement, the contractor has put in a claim for extension of time of 78 days, which the engineer has determined valid. The CDB has granted, the CDB has granted a no objection to the, um, the extension of time on the basis of the engineer's determination that it is without additional cost to the contract amount. So that extension of time, Mr. Speaker, has been granted, and it is granted um, knowing fully well that there shall be no addition to cost um, on the part of the contractor. It should be noted, Mr. Speaker, that the revised time for completion of the infrastructure works for lots 2A, 3A, and 3B is July 31, 2024, which is outside of the current disbursement period for the project. So it is important, Mr. Speaker, that considering the time by which the project will be completed, and that is lots 2, 2A, 3A, and 3B, that there is a need for even um, greater aggression to ensure that the contractor performs and performs in an efficient and timely way. The final component of the project, Mr. Speaker, is lot 2B, the ancillary bridge, and that is that component, Mr. Speaker, has been awarded to OB Sadu, a local contractor, and is the only local contractor on this entire project, even though C.O. Williams, even, beg your it's, yes, Mr. Speaker, yes, Mr. Speaker, that project was tendered. All of the components, Mr. Speaker, every one of them, everyone was tendered, and it comprised contractors, not only from St. Lucia and the Caribbean, but also member countries, member shareholders of the Caribbean Development Bank, including the, the People's Republic of China, and of course the United Kingdom. The answer bridge, Mr. Speaker, Obi Sadu, local contractor, we are proud that he was able to make it. The contract was signed on the 15th of 16th of March, 2023. Commencement date is April 17, 2023. Major milestones, Mr. Speaker, compliance with documents except for the work program, all other submissions are compliant. All other submissions are compliant with the exce exception of the work program which needs to be approved. Project affected persons, what we call the PAPs, project affected persons, and that is because, Mr. Speaker, particularly in the area of the bridge, a number of residents in the ancillary area must be relocated. The government has proceeded to identify a location for those individuals. The lands have been surveyed and earmarked, and persons have been given an indication of their lots, and we are now presently completing designs for the construction of those homes. However, the government has secured um, temporary location to house those individuals, and so we have been working with them in that regard. There are five households to be relocated to give the contractor full possession of the site, even though he's already on starting work. Three individuals have expect, ex, um, accepted and signed the um, entitlement packages. One of the three individuals has temporarily relocated in preparation. Regarding the other two, one individual did not want to move to the place, and we believe that it's more than just his own decision not to move, but we believe that his own color is affecting him. And when I speak of color, I speak of his political color is influencing him in taking, making a decision of national interest rather than a political decision. <laughs> um, also, Mr. Speaker, the third individual who is not the owner of the property on which he occupies has been given notice to vacate the premises, and soon he should be moving. The chief surveyor from the Department of Physical Development is involved and up to last week was on site ensuring that um, the two problematic individuals were engaged and, um, 
and of course to ensure that the, the objections are registered. An agreement has not yet, be, not yet arrived, but we're hoping, Mr. Speaker, that by the 9th of this month, all persons will be relocated. There is one settlement to be made, Mr. Speaker, and that is um, the contractor is currently um, this, um, working with the, that person, and it's really one who operates a block facility. The structure is scheduled to be completed by the contractor to relocate this block facility, and it will be, will be ready for the 11th to the 15th of October to facilitate that re relocation. Utilities, Mr. Speaker, on that segment of the road, or rather the bridge, the utility companies are to provide estimates for relocation of utilities, utility poles, water, etc. Mr. Speaker, investing in our road infrastructure is not just an economic imperative. It is a commitment to the well-being and prosperity of our nation. Hence, I urge all of you to support the need to prioritize the development, maintenance, and modernization of our road network. Next year, we are hoping there will be an intensified program of infrastructure in the country. And I must thank the Prime Minister for being patient and supportive in our endeavors to bring St. Lucia's infrastructure up to the standard of the international world. Let us work together to build a robust, sustainable, and well-connected road infrastructure that will drive our nation towards a brighter future. I thank you.